Hey everyone, Eric Stackelbeck here. How do we know that we can trust God even in these uncertain times that we are living in today? Look no further than the nation of Israel. Find out what I mean this week, only right here on the Watchman Newscast. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Did you know that as followers of Jesus, we have a biblical mandate to encourage each other? In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11, the Apostle Paul tells the church at Thessalonica that they are to encourage one another and build each other up. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 17, it says that iron sharpens iron. The bottom line is the Bible is very clear that believers should support one another, encourage one another, and edify one another. And folks, we need that right now with the coronavirus raging all around us. We need to remember, and I'm going to provide you with this encouragement this week, we need to remember that God is faithful and He is a promise-keeping God. I can't think of any better example of God's faithfulness than His history, His covenant, His promises to the nation of Israel. So we're going to get into that this week. Before I do, I just want to encourage you to subscribe to the Watchman News channel right here on YouTube. Click the notification button, give us a big thumbs up and like what we are doing so we can continue to bring you this analysis and commentary that you just won't hear anywhere else, certainly not in the mainstream media, and for such a time as this. Okay, the faithfulness of God Almighty. Even during a global pandemic, He still sits on the throne. He still loves you, and He is still in control of events. We're going to get into a little bit of history this week with Israel and God's promises to Israel, how they have consistently been fulfilled, how He has been faithful time and time again to the nation of of Israel. Let's rewind to the beginning. The book of Genesis, God says to Abraham, I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. I will make your descendants a mighty nation. There it is, the original covenant. And Israel becomes a nation eventually. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Israel goes on to to take the land that God has promised them eternally, the land of Israel. We have the Davidic kingdom, King David, King Solomon. Things are rolling, things are thriving, and then idol worship sets in. A lot of evil things were happening in Israel. What does God do? He sends judgment. He sends the Assyrians. They take away 10 of the tribes of Israel. Then he sends, in 586 BC, the Babylonian Empire. They destroy the first temple. They burn Jerusalem to the ground. The Jewish people are scattered. Many of them are taken away captive to Babylon. But God is faithful. He's a promise-keeping God. He brings them back 70 years later. Just read Nehemiah. Read Ezra in the Old Testament. The Jewish people return. They rebuild the temple. They return to Jerusalem. The second temple is thriving. And then in the year 70 AD, the Romans destroy the second temple, uh, burn Jerusalem once again. Things really come to a head in 132 to 135 AD, the Bar Kokhba revolt. That was kind of the final nail in the coffin in many ways, where probably that was the first, that was a genocide, really, folks, carried out by the Romans uh, against the Israelites in the Bar Kokhba revolt. Some people say close to a million Jews were killed in that conflict. The bottom line is this, the Jewish people, by the time 135 AD rolled around, the end of the Bar Kokhba revolt, the Jewish people were scattered to the ends of the earth. The Roman Emperor Hadrian renamed Jerusalem. Think about this, Jerusalem, God's city. He renamed it Aelia Capitolina, and he made it a pagan city, and he erected a pagan shrine on the Temple Mount. This really happened under the Emperor Hadrian. So the Jewish people are scattered to the ends of the earth for century after century, persecutions, pogroms, terrible things happening as they are, they are separated from their ancestral homeland, the land of Israel, and from the city of Jerusalem. They pray next year in Jerusalem every year. Finally, after 2,000 years, it comes. Now, two things here. Uh, number one, very important to remember, this is overlooked, there was always a Jewish presence in the land of Israel. Even after the Bar Kokhba revolt, even after AD 70, where the Roman general Titus uh, destroyed the Second Temple, there was always a Jewish presence in that land. Sometimes it was very small. 
throughout those 2,000 years. But look, in Jerusalem in particular, in the Galilee region, places like Tiberias and Sfat, there was always a Jewish presence in the land. A lot of people don't realize that. The land was not completely emptied, uh, emptied of Jews at any time during the 2,000 years before the miraculous restoration of Israel uh, in 1948. As a matter of fact, in the 1850s, even before the great Zionist movement really started, there was a Jewish majority in Jerusalem. Pretty amazing historical fact that you're not going to hear in many places these days, unfortunately. Now, why is this so amazing? Folks, think about this. For a people to be dispersed for 2,000 years, hounded no matter where they went, every country they went to, hounded, chased down, persecuted, second-class citizens, in many cases, pogroms, a holocaust, but after 2,000 years of this, this same people returns to their ancient homeland, uh, makes the deserts bloom, makes it thrive once again. They revive the Hebrew language after over 2,000 years of really not being in any kind of regular use. The Hebrew language is revived. This land, which was in many ways a wasteland, read Mark Twain. He wrote a book called Innocence Abroad about his travels in the Holy Land. He couldn't believe how desolate the land of Israel was. The Holy Land, this was, I believe, he wrote it in the 1850s, 1860s uh, when he went to the Holy Land. But Innocence Abroad, incredible book, very eye-opening. But travelers who went to Israel during those times, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th century, said, wow, this is the Holy Land, this is the Jerusalem that I read about in the Bible as a young child, and this is what it's come to now? They were disheartened and depressed. So for the Jewish people to return and make this land bloom and blossom and thrive once again after 2,000 years, have you ever heard anything like that, folks, in all of human history, to revive the ancient Hebrew language? And folks, to do this really also out of the ashes of the Holocaust, uh, Israel was reborn in 1948, just three years after the Holocaust uh, ended. Uh, what are the odds? And by the way, it was not a result. The reestablishment of Israel was not a result of the Holocaust because over 50% of the new Jewish citizens in the reborn state of Israel were not from Europe. They were from Arab and Muslim countries in the Middle East and North Africa. They were Sephardic Jews. Let's just get that kind of, uh, that historical inaccuracy that a lot of Israel haters use. Let's just get that out of the way right now. But folks, think about that. Who ever heard of such a thing? And for Israel to thrive and bless the world and be a light into the nations with amazing uh, scientific, high-tech, and technological breakthroughs today, uh, with the great humanitarian work they're doing around the world. And folks, hey, I know they're working on a coronavirus vaccine right now in Israel. We'll see what happens. They have some pretty sharp minds in Israel today working, so I'm encouraged by that as well. But to see all that happen... And in the past 72 years since Israel's miraculous restoration in 1948, to see Israel thrive despite relentless, during those 72 years, relentless assaults from neighboring nations, from terror groups. Uh, the Israelis have never really had a moment where they can truly rest and be in peace and just enjoy the land. Yet poll after poll shows that Israelis are among the happiest people in the world. Imagine that. Folks, I say all this to say, God was faithful to Israel through it all. His promises, he's a promise-keeping God. His promises did not return void. His word does not return void. The book of Amos, I mean, you could go throughout, read Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel 36 and 37, but the book of Amos chapter 9, verse 15, I think is just really sums it up. God says, I will restore my people Israel from captivity. This is after 2,000 years. They will rebuild and inhabit the ruined cities. They will plant vineyards and drink their wine, and they will make gardens and eat their fruit, says the Lord your God. That's Amos, Amos chapter 9, verse 15. That's on top of everything, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. God kept this promise. Folks, that's what's happening today in Israel. He's planted the people of Israel back in the land that he has given them. They have made the desert bloom. They have rebuilt the ruined cities. God keeps his promises. He's faithful. So, if he's been faithful to Israel, certainly he will be faithful to you. Folks, what are the odds? 
What are the odds that Israel would be reborn after 2,000 years of dispersion and persecution and chaos? What are the odds? The Hebrew language revived. Folks, you know, a rabbi said, I was speaking, speaking at an event a few years ago, and a rabbi came up on stage and said, when Israel was reborn in 1948, it got a whole lot harder to be an atheist. Israel's existence is proof of God's existence. And, and what part of everlasting don't the Israel haters understand? Because God made clear in his word that he has an everlasting covenant with Israel. And that's what we're seeing play out today, right now, in real time, in 2020. Pretty exciting. We live in Bible times, folks. Perilous times, as we're experiencing right now, but Bible times. I just wanted to encourage you with that this week. Israel is proof positive of God's enduring faithfulness against all odds. If he was faithful to Israel, he'll be faithful to you because he will never leave you or forsake you. Okay, we're going to wrap up here real quick. Before I do, just want to encourage you again to subscribe to the news channel here. Click the notification button. Join our team at Christians United for Israel. That's CUFI.org. We are over 8 million believers who are standing boldly and firmly in the gap with Israel and the Jewish people for such a time as this, the world's largest pro-Israel organization. So join our team at Kufi. Lastly, if you like the Watchman newscast, you'll love our weekly television show, The Watchman on TBN. That's 10.30 p.m. Eastern Friday nights, 4 p.m. Eastern on Sunday afternoons, and then 12.30 a.m. Eastern on the Fox Business Network. Folks, we are getting on the ground around the world, Israel, Jordan, Iraq, Europe, Washington, D.C., and bringing you the inside story on what's happening in the Middle East and how it affects you no matter where you live. So hang in there during this coronavirus. God is still on the throne. Be encouraged because he is faithful. Until next time, God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace.